to you? Just for this moment, stop trying to be somewhere else. Drop the strain of needing to get to a year from now, or even just a few months from now, or until payday, or until vacation, or until you get that response back, that call back, whatever your mind is telling you you need, which is not here yet in order for you to be happy, to be content. When you become aware of the silence, you become aware of contentment. The silence, like the Buddha said, is your refuge. You make yourself a refuge so that you can walk and be unchained from everything, so that you can sit with me right now without the worries of the world. Every worry you have is of the world, is of a worldly thing. 99% of the prayers you have, the prayers you pray, are of the world, for your world, about circumstances, or people, or things. Things you think you need, things you think are missing, things you hope are coming in the future. But that 1% of prayer the prayer of freedom, the prayer for God to give you courage to look through appearances, to look through the world, to look through the thought that says you need this or lack that, the prayer that asks God to replace you with him, this 1% of prayer, or to take it a step further, just abiding in the silence that we practice each day. This is wonder-working prayer. Brother Lawrence, the monk that lived in France in the 1600s, he said, I've abandoned all particular forms of devotion, all prayer techniques. My only prayer practice is attention. I carry on a habitual, silent, and secret conversation with God that fills me with overwhelming joy. He says he lifts up his heart to God while he's eating, while he's talking with others, while he's walking while he's washing dishes, he's continuously filling God and calls that prayer. For these five to ten minutes each morning, we are filling God. We are praying together. The whole time I'm speaking to you, I'm praying that you can fill this love I feel where you are and that you won't stop filling it after the outro and you can carry it throughout the day or be aware that it's carrying you throughout the day so that when you're in a stressful moment, it's as if something inside taps you on your shoulder or kisses you, and you remember again, you feel again. Or if you're walking down the street and the breeze, the wind blows through your hair, you immediately go to, ah, that's the breath of God. That's God's presence here. Not just, oh, it's a breeze or it's windy today. God is breathing on me. The sun shining, filling the sun on your skin. God is shining on me. You're drinking water. God is nourishing me. When you're eating, constantly remembering man does not live by bread alone. Filling that inner food, that spiritual food filling you in every moment using every moment, every opportunity for God, even the tough ones, seeing tough situations as love calling you home, God calling you back into the awareness of its presence. And in its presence, problems dissolve because problems were only the denial of the presence of God. That's Herb Fitch. So the problems dissolve. You, the concept of you dissolves in that silence. In the silence that you feel right now, that you are right now. Close your eyes. You are shapeless, undefined, non localized, weightless aware of weight where that body is felt, 
but you're the weightless awareness of the weight. The weight is perceived, but just linger in the perceiving. What is it that knows there's a body seated with its eyes closed? What is it that hears this voice? And those thoughts. What is it that gets worried and impatient? That's trying to get to a future moment. You sit with questions like this during the day. You interrupt the ego, the lack, the striving, the doubt, the overwhelm, the worrying. 99% of your thoughts, you interrupt that with the 1%, the questioning, who is it that is worried? Using the mind to question itself and abiding in the silence that follows the question, concentrating on the silence that follows the question, being the silence that follows the question, until that 1% becomes 5%, becomes 20%, becomes 80%, 100%, then the mind is pure. It's the mind that was in Christ. It's the Buddha mind, the mind that you use, not the other way around. You picking it up and using it when it is needed for a task, but having the power to turn it off when you don't need it, when you don't need its judgments and opinions, just abiding as the silence. What happens when you reach 100%? How does it feel when only love is here? The answer to every question you pose is the same. Or as Ramana Maharshi says, the silence dissolves the question and the questioner, leaving only the answer. Only this. I love you. And we'll chat soon. If this episode helped you feel good, helped you feel God, then leave a review on Apple Podcasts and screenshot it and send it to me for a free gift. And follow me on Patreon so I can see you, so I can see your smile.